Hello everyone, and welcome back to Reentry in Orbital Simulator, where I continue the Apollo training missions with some of the harder ones, AGC and auto maneuvering, SPS burn planning, atmospheric entry, and transposition and docking. I'll see how long it goes, and maybe transposition and docking would have to go in with the full Earth mission test. Uh, it depends on how long each of these tutorials are, because I don't want to make a video that's too long, but we'll see. So let's try auto maneuvering which is using the computer to maneuver the spacecraft. Welcome to the auto maneuver lesson. In this lesson, we will go deeper into using the AGC, the Apollo uh, Guidance Computer, and how to orient the spacecraft using the pings. I'm just going to call it the pings. Uh, the pings is using onboard system systems to point the spacecraft towards a set attitude. To orient, thrusters are fired to start a very low angular rate, or very slow angular rate, to react Reach, I think that's reach, the destination orientation. The reason for this is fuel consumption and weight. If you need to help it, you can by using direct mode or the SCS to maneuver manually, but always plan your attitude changes and ensure you always have enough time after time scaling. Before ignition, it is important to verify your attitude with any visual cues you might have, such as the FDAI window or optics. Never trust the attitude blindly. First of all, separate from the S4B by pressing the uh, CSM LV set button. Okay, CSM is now free from the launch vehicle, currently orbiting Earth. Use the view selector to move to the disk key. Go. Verb 6 is used to read and display a memory location specified by the noun. Some of the nouns will display one memory location and it will be drawn into the first register, R1, that's the top line there. Uh, there are three registers available. Some nouns will display two memory locations, they'll be drawn into R1 and R2. And then some will have R3. Okay. Noun 22 will display the desired ICDU angles. <laughs> so many acronyms. Uh, into R1, R2, and R3. R1 will display roll, R2 will, will display pitch, and R3 will display yaw. So verb, and then 06, 0, 2, enter. Okay, so that is our current uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. Each of the numbers have five digits, so the last two are the decimal part. And so if R1 reads 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, it means roll will be 23 degrees. So it's roll, pitch, yaw, sorry. I said it in the wrong order. But uh, what the five digits represents varies between nouns, right? There's only for noun 22. Uh, okay, so here we have the gimbal angles being 0, 21, and 0 degrees. Please see the reentry Apollo flight manual for a list of all verbs and nouns. The AGC can run programs and routines to execute functions. We will touch two routines today. Touch upon two routines today. Uh, R48 to set up the digital autopilot and R62, the crew defined maneuvering routine. I don't know why, uh, I guess R because routine, but uh, do they, did they need to uh, distinguish programs and routines? I don't know. Uh, we will first directly edit noun 22, just as an example, to learn how to modify values and then learn how to auto maneuver using R48 and R62. I think this is new. I don't remember doing this in the uh, last time that I did the Apollo training missions. Okay, let's learn how to change values. I think I they did talk about how to change noun 22. I don't remember the routines. So anyway, uh, so verb 21 allows you to insert values into register 1. Verb 22 allows you to insert values into register 2, and verb 23 allows you to insert values into register 3. You need to insert all the values, including the sign when inserting the values, so we have to type in 5 digits. Since you ran verb 6 noun 22, the specified noun 22 is displayed. We wish to change the yaw value, namely R3 to 180 to all maneuver to the retrograde attitude, since that's the yaw. We can then use verb 23 to change R3. So verb 23. 
Okay, now it's cleared the third register. And now we have to remember to put the plus. Okay. And then 1800. 18,000, sorry. And then press enter. Okay, when pressing enter after the last digit, the value gets inserted into memory. If you enter something wrong, press clear and then start the entry again. Again, always double check before pressing enter or proceed. That's pro. Are, are you able to set R2 to 0? It shows 21 degrees now. Yes. Well, okay, so verb 22, enter, plus... Zero, 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 zero. Enter. Okay. Now verify that the spacecraft control is given to the command module computer by ensuring SCCONT is set to CMC. Uh, there it is. It is CMC. Okay, that's why it's not highlighted. Once we start the auto maneuver, the spacecraft will maneuver to the attitude relative to the stable reference platform, the IMU. Uh, since this is not aligned, we will use Ordeal to drive the FDAI uh, to local vertical. This will make it easier to reach the re retrograde direction of the current flight path. Set Ordeal power above the left side window. So this is one of the interesting places. <laughs> it's not on the front panel, it's over here. Uh, and set it to Earth. Okay. And then set Ordeal FDAI 1 to orbital rate. And forget what the other one is. So anyway, so it's going to go with the orbital flight path. Yes. Now we w next we will configure the digital autopilot using the digital autopilot data load routine. So yeah, it's it's interesting. So this is started using verb 48. On this key press verb or 8 and then enter. Okay. Then open the verb 48 DAP data load checklist from the CSM checklist on the mission pad. It's right at the bottom here. Well, it's not right at the bottom, but it's pretty low down here. Verb 48 DAP data load. It's under C, uh, G and C general. Get familiar with the checklist and then press Roger. Okay, we are on verb 6, noun 46, R1, A, B, C, D, E, R2, A, B, C, D, E. So what it says is, what is the configuration? A, CSM, and S4B. Well, we just let go of the S4B, so that should probably be 1, CSM. And then it's telling which RCS quads, I definitely did not do this before. Um, which quads to use for what and so it's using a and c and b and d here and then that's the fourth digit is the error dead band and then the fifth digit is the rate select 0.2 degrees per second in this case and then register two is saying use b or c for roll and then quad a fail quad b fail Quad D, uh, C fail, quad D fail. I don't know what that means. I mean, probably want to use something then. I don't know. So let's see what they have to say. Okay, yes, 446 is flashing, and we see the setup. Each of the digits in register 1 has meaning. We just went through that. Okay, yes. And A is a spacecraft configuration, 3 means CSM and S4B. We separated, so the S4B should become 1. It's not. Um, it's not 1. D is the dead band, where uh, 0 will be the dead band to 0.5, 1 will be to 5. 1 will set to 5 degrees. If set to 5, the DAP will try to maintain the attitude within 5 degrees. A small DB is more precise but spends a lot more fuel to maintain accuracy. E is the rate, basically how fast the spacecraft will move towards the, the set attitude. So this is like tuning your SAS. And so yeah, that's the rate select. 
and so we're currently at the 0.2 degrees. Low numbers are des uh, desired as they consume less fuel. We want to set the DAP to 11111. Uh, this will be a CSM configuration with a dead band of 5 degrees and a rate of 0.2 degrees per second. So that's register 1, so we use verb 21 to change it, right? 21 is the top one, 22 is the second one, 23 is the third one. Okay, so verb 2, 1, enter. And then plus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, but do not press enter. Okay, verify, and then press enter. Okay. Then press pro. Verb 6, noun 47 sh should show. So, this one case where we press pro. Sometimes we don't press pro, sometimes we do. Uh, so, pro. Alright, verb 6, noun 47. This is the current weight data and needs to be filled in. To get the weights, you will need to request the weight data from Mission Control. <laughs> Oh boy. Press C on the keyboard, and all right, those that request weight data is not part of this menu, so yes. All right, press this and receive data. Okay, 60,215 pounds. Okay, 60,000, no, let's enter text, 60,215 pounds, all right. Okay, and we will soon insert it. Okay, the weight might differ, but use the number relayed to you in their case. It was 6,215 pounds, yes. Okay, so that seems very different from the numbers we have here, though. So, verb 2, 1, enter, plus. What if you have a negative weight? <laughs> Okay, verify, and then enter. I mean, it seems a lot heavier than the other number. Lem weight is bypassed as we selected... Oh, okay, so maybe it was um, more because that the top one would be the CSM and the bottom would be Lem or something like that. Um, but it's bypassed because we're in this mode, and that's just a CSM mode, so it combines the two. So press proceed. Last step, we need to insert the TVC trim of the SPS, the Thrust Vector Control Trim for the Service Propulsion System. This can be left to zero for now as it's not currently simulated. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, proceed. Now that we have the basics and know how to interact with the AGC, do you remember all that? Uh, let's give the auto maneuvering a try using R62. Okay, uh, it's just this uh, crew defined maneuvering using verb 49, this checklist. And that's routine 62. Okay, on the deski verb or 9. Okay, enter. There's our 180, that's what we had before. Yes, we have the checklist open. Get familiar with it. Okay, well, getting familiar. Well, I think I'm gonna need to talk through it to get familiar with it, so continue. First thing you'll see is verb 6, noun 22 displaying, that's the attitude. We've already modified these. Press proceed to accept these gimbal angles. Okay, then it's... Um, they'll copy those and then we have noun 18, verb 50, request the auto maneuvering. Verify that the CMC is in control and the mode is set to auto. Yes, CMC and auto. Okay, then press proceed to accept the auto maneuvering. The spacecraft should now start to orient itself towards the desired attitude. Well. Um, okay, let's go to the left hand seat. I guess it's doing it really, really slowly because we set it to go 0.2 degrees per second. This is about 0.2 degrees per second. So, yeah. 
Notice that the DAP tries to move towards the desired attitude. It loses, uses a slow rate as configured by the DAP setup. And once the desired attitude is reached, it will try to maintain it within a set dead band 5 degrees. This concludes the auto maneuver lesson. Use this method to position the spacecraft attitude. Okay, but um, let me just... Uh, we should wait and see when it actually gets to where it's supposed to go. Time warp does not actually change the rate at which we are turning. See, we've got time scale 25 up there. Hmm. 100. Oh, maybe it's... Now, now it's to the... I don't know. It doesn't seem to help a whole lot. Okay, well, I'm convinced it's gonna get to retrograde or something like it eventually. Uh, it's worth noting that it's definitely not going to take the path that we expect it to take. And it's going to be slow. Alright, so in the session. Alright, SBS burn planning. So that's just orientation. Now we have to actually plan a burn. Okay, so in the previous lessons we learned how to use the Apollo Guidance Computer, how to operate the SPS engine, as well as a brief introduction to auto maneuvering features. In this lesson we will use all of these technologies to make controlled changes to our orbit using the SPS burn planning tool. We are currently in orbit around Earth in a CSM only configuration. Please check the briefing page on your mission pad before moving on. Briefing. Okay, well that's what they just said. Uh, first, so, so we will need to first select where in our current orbit we wish to uh, wish we wish that our burn will take place. Uh, to set the burn position, we'll need to use the phase of our current orbit. The phase is an angle between zero and 360 degrees and represents your position in a given orbit. A phase angle of zero degrees is the orbit's periapsis position, uh, while 180 is the apoapsis. Uh, phase between one, 0 and 180 is somewhere between periapsis and apoapsis on the way towards apoapsis, uh, while a phase angle between 180 and 360 is somewhere between apo apoapsis and periapsis, and going back down. Uh, the second input required by the tool is the amount... Look at all the little dots they have prepared for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, the second input required by the tool is the amount of delta V the burn will have, this is the amount of velocity change given in feet per second. Feet per second, folks. The last input is the direction of the burn. Based on these inputs, the tool will give you an estimate of your new orbit, when the engine needs to ignite. If you are satisfied, press request, and Mission Control will communicate the details with you, as well as uplinking the data to your AGC. To prepare for the burn after using the tool and pressing request, you need to first run the P30, external, external Delta V program, on the AGC to set the burn, and then use P40, the SPS program, to execute and monitor the burn itself. Okay, so that's the mission pad part. First, set the FDAI on the ordeal to orbital rate. That's up here, so orb rate. Set ordeal to Earth. And go to the orbital view using the view selector. Orbital view. Okay. And select the earth view mode. Earth view mode. So we're not oriented in a weird way. Alright. Open the communication tool. And we want burn planner. Alright. This is maneuver planner for the S SCSM. And we plan, plan orbital changes of the SPS engine. It has three parameters you can use to plan your burn, the phase, the delta V, and the burn direction. Let's start with the phase. Uh, set the phase value to 40 by clicking the input box and typing in 40. So again, that'll be on the way up to apoapsis, 40 degrees from periapsis. I don't know why we have that in the background because I can't really see much. Uh, I wish the periapsis and apoapsis were indicated really much more boldly, but okay. Um, Roger. The phase is one of the orbital parameters. We already discussed this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, next is the amount of velocity change we want to we want the burn to make. Set this value to 100 feet per second. Okay. Alright. 
Last parameter is the direction of the burn. I set this to prograde. It is prograde. We only have prograde, retrograde, real in, real out. So that's rough. Um, that means an inclination change. Unless they're referring to radial as something different, an inclination change isn't allowed. Or we would have to do it manually. A uh, phase of 40 will set the ignition time just above the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. Uh, so periapsis, I guess that's the periapsis dot? I can't even see periapsis, but I guess that's where it is. Okay. If all the parameters set, you can see the estimated trajectory orange line. Toggle predictor trajectory. I'll try that. Um, well, I don't see the estimated trajectory here. I don't see any change up there, and not that this makes it easy to see. But the data here, let's let's say I say retrograde instead. Oh, it doesn't change that. Oh, it does. Okay, see the periapsis went down to 48.8, so that's fine. That would be an atmospheric entry, yes. And that boosts our apoapsis up because we're currently in a circular orbit. So that data there is fine. It's just that I don't know about this orange line. To prepare for the burn, press request. Mission Control will communicate the parameters to you. And the next step will be to set up the burn in the AGC. So request. Snoopy 3. Time of SPS ignition is 1 hour, 31 minutes, 10 seconds, with delta V of 100 feet per second prograde. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, I guess I don't have to jot everything down. We'll at least have the information here. Uh, has Ray set the values? Oh yeah, they, they do set the values, so maybe I just don't have to copy it. So they've already uploaded it into the computer. We just have to verify it. So verb three seven. Enter and this is program thirty. Okay. Program used to set up a burn using the SPS. Shouldn't you tell me to enter the numbers into the uh, do we not get to use the burn pad anymore? Because I like that. Um <laughs> We will go through this in the deorbiting session too, but as program 30 loads, noun 33 will show the time of ignition. Uh, if you wish to main cha make changes, you can do so using verb 21, 22, 23, or 25. They haven't mentioned what 25 does. But anyway, so uh, it is 1 hour, 31 minutes, and 10 seconds, which is what we have read here. So that's fine. All right. We'll use the data sets, so press proceed to proceed. Okay. Noun 81 shows plan delta V in register 3. This should be set to 100 feet per second. That doesn't look like plus 100 in register 3. I mean, if it was register 1 that was the delta V, I could imagine it'd be 99.1. They didn't ask me to enter it into the pad or verify that at all. Well, AGC will spend some time calculating the results of the burn and present the results for you. R1 and R2 shows the periapsis and apoapsis after the burn. R3 shows the velocity in FPS. I mean, I think they want me to proceed there. Hold on, let me just... Okay. Press Pro to proceed. So it calculates. Okay, and so periapsis and apoapsis, does that match what we were supposed to have? Well, the apoapsis is higher than expected. It was supposed to be 159.7. It's actually 160.9. And then that bottom one, the velocity in FPS is more than it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be just 100. It's 102.2 for some reason. Okay, so proceed. Now 45 will then count down towards the burn. Looking at this number, the time scale is about 10 minutes before the burn. 
So the way this works, it's uh, the first two digits is the minutes. There's a constant zero, and then the last two digits are the seconds. So, okay. Press Pro to end program 30, and then the AGC will enter Poo, the idle program. Okay. Next part is to start program 40, the SPS program. So, well, uh, okay, it's telling me to insert, so. And it actually wants me to press noun. Sometimes it doesn't need noun pressed. Okay, program 40. The first thing you will see is flashing verb 50 noun 18. This is the AGC requesting to maneuver the CSM to desired FDAI angles for auto maneuver. Press proceed to proceed. Now an 18 should still be visible, but now you can see the values. All registers should be zero. This means we will maneuver to a prograde attitude. Press proceed. If you wish to make changes to the attitude, you can use verb 21, 22, 23, or 25. Okay, but okay, press proceed again. Next, the AGC asks you to perform an additional checklist, 204. Press Pro to skip this now. So, for future reference, I guess now 25 is check this checklist? I mean, I didn't know it could tell us to do a checklist, but... Next, the AGC asks you to perform... Okay, that, we already did that. Um, next. Noun 40 is now counting down to the burn. All maneuver is a very slow process. Yes, we found that out last time. 0.2 degrees per second. The CSM is designed to maneuver slow to save fuel. Feel free to time scale when the attitude is correct or help it using the direct thrusters. So, yeah, I, we sh we're pretty much prograde anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's arm the SPS engine on panel 1, set del delta V, thrust A to arm up. Can I reach that? Okay, apparently I can. Verify that the attitude is prograde. It is. And pay attention to the countdown. When it's 5 seconds left to the burn, verb 99 shows, asking you for per permission to ignite, press proceed to allow. And it took me out of time warp at 1 minute before the burn. Oh, now it's cleared everything, but we're not at 99 yet. That was just 30 seconds before the burn it does that. Okay, 5 seconds. Verb 99, proceed. Okay, now it's burning. Okay, R2 is counting up. That's the second register there. Shows the delta V still required by the burn. When there's zero, the SPS engine will shut down. Or, I guess, close enough to zero. Um, press Pro to proceed to noun 44, showing the new orbit data. Okay, so... Very quick burn. Okay, now it's showing the new orbit data. Yeah, we had to press Pro twice. So, noun 44, 158.9 nautical miles by 101.2. It's close to what we were looking for. So, now to the idle program. And again, one press doesn't seem to do it. Okay. Go to the orbital view to see your new orbit. Not that I could tell before, anyway. I mean... Yeah, I mean, without numbers on here or... Yeah, I don't know. It didn't show me the little orange line, I don't think, before. Unless it was a really tiny orange line. Open the console, which is back quote. That one, the tilde key. Okay. And run the command orbit info dash cm to see the orbital parameter. Look, I trust the computer, okay? Anyway, so apparently we used the tilde key for the console. Uh, I guess just in case you have trouble, orbit info dash cm. Okay, so that's the orbit info for the cm. Uh, if we scroll up, the thing is, it shows the orbit info in kilometers. So the periapsis, that's 187 kilometers. 
larger numbers are from the center of the Earth, and that's in kilometers. So that sort of makes it harder to compare to the numbers that we were expecting in the system, which is nautical miles and all that business. So, all right. What, what do they want me to do with that? Okay, so... Insertion, delta V... Here it says delta V 92.5 SN5 feet per second. I guess that's the lower bounds that they wanted. Incidentally, without using the tilde key option, um, the map tells us. I mean, we don't need to go to the console to get that information. Here it says CSM. Let me get the view selector out. CSM 158.9 by 101.2 nautical miles altitude. I mean, I think it's better to just use this map rather than try to. Uh, even use the orbital view <laughs> or or the console so this is just my thought anyway and mission okay atmospheric entry and yeah i think i'll end with this one because these were these were heavy heavy sort of tutorials with lots of computer work lots to digest Okay, welcome to the atmospheric entry lesson. This is an involved lesson, as if the previous two weren't, and will be the last one of the basics needed to operate the command module. Set ordeal to Earth. Yes, and let me guess, FDAI to orbital rate. <laughs> All right. The first thing we need to do is perform the SPS, uh, is the perf The first thing we will do is Perform the SPS burn in the retrograde direction. Please open the mission pad and open the SPS deorbit and entry checklist. We'll use P30 to set up the burn. So it shows that there, number one, verb 3730E. Uh, I advise you to reference the AGC chapter in the manual following the steps for P30 and P40 while going through this lesson. Before we continue, please know this lesson will go through the basic steps needed to land. The process is so involved that I think it's best to learn the major tasks needed first. Once you know those, you should be able to practice using the checklists and perform the more realistic procedures, but use the checklist as a reference throughout this lesson. Open the CSM burn planner and plan an entry burn with an entry interface of about 2 degrees. Set the phase. 260 and the delta v 475 set the direction retrograde and we'll notice a negative periapsis of 97.1 nautical miles and the, what they said about the entry interface angle about two degrees you can see the ei flight path angle 2.06 degrees okay when ready start program 30 using verb 37 Okay, so we've got that. So that's the time. 2 hours, 37 minutes, and 7 seconds. Okay, and that's all the pad stuff, and we can see that on the transcript here. But they don't have the little... us entering the stuff on the little pad. That's sad. You can change the values, but we should have the right values. Press Pro to proceed. Pro. Okay, impulsive delta V. Okay, so the top one is the delta V indicator. It wasn't the bottom one. I don't know why previously it said... Um, I think this the top one is in like the prograde or retrograde direction and the other two are in other directions. But yeah, the main thing is the first one. So that's 475 feet per second. All right. This is used to set the amount of delta V burn in a vector format, allowing the burn to happen in a given direction, and retrograde minus, yes. The value is already populated by mission control after using the burn tool. Press Pro to accept the values, yes. And the computer will spend some time and then give us the resulting orbit. So apoapsis 161.6, periapsis negative 97.1, and then the delta V again. Okay, press Pro to proceed. Okay, now it's counting down, showing the time to ignition register 2. Press Pro to accept, and the AGC will now automatically start Poo. I'm, I can actually see the next few messages here. 
Next we need to orient the spacecraft, so I guess we should just uh, proceed as it says. Roger. Okay. We'll use verb 49, and this will load routine 62. <laughs> Complete the routine as we are in a local vertical mode. Okay, so uh, just, just for reference, we'll bring up that checklist. So that's this one. So we are in zero and then key for... All right. So that is local vertical set R3 to 180. Yes, it is. Set R1 and R2 to zero. Well, R2 isn't zero. So verb 22, enter, plus zero, zero. Okay, so we've got the right numbers, and so we just accept, proceed, and then confirm the maneuver request. Proceed. Okay, so it's turning at its very, 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 very slow pace. And this says, when the spacecraft is in the correct attitude, run program 40. So, we have to wait. Okay, we're finally getting there. It's been a bit. <laughs> but it's getting close to retrograde here. I don't know what kind of tolerance I need before we go to the next program. Okay, I think I need to proceed on this, otherwise I can't enter the next verb. Okay. Verb 37. Enter 40. Enter. Okay. And yes. Means request maneuver. Auto maneuver attitude. Proceed. Okay. Yes. It's still doing that. And I press proceed there. Okay. Now 25. And flashing with R1 set to 204, meaning perform checklist item 204, and we skip that. Okay, now 40 is counting down, the delta V is in the second register, and then I guess that's the final velocity. Okay, arm the SPS engine. Okay. We can arm B too. Uh, well, we'll keep it to A. When the countdown shows that it's 35 seconds left, the register will be blank for 5 seconds. We saw that before. And then at 5 seconds, we will be at verb 99 and press proceed. So, all looks good. So, I've got time warp. Okay, we're within 1 minute now. It Went a little bit off, so it's readjusting. Okay, verb 99, proceed. And it's burning. Okay, yep. Burn executing. We see the status of the burn. The second register shows the delta V. Well, we have to get to zero on the delta V, basically. The top number is the time, and the bottom number is the expected ending velocity in orbit in feet per second. Okay, not quite as much as we wanted, but alright. Press Pro to continue. Twice, really. So now it's showing an apoapsis of 162, but a periapsis it isn't showing the negative number, but it's okay. Um, press Pro again to exit the program. Disarm the SPS engine again. Uh, did we actually disarm it? <laughs> Thrust off. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's correct. We don't want to have an unplanned ignition. Next, we will prepare for re-entry in capital letters. <laughs> because it's the name of the game. Anyway, uh, ESM also needs to be set up. Set the mode. Uh, okay, I'm probably going to need to move a little bit. 
I set the mode to V0 set. And then set V0 to the 25,500 line as we are performing the Earth orbit entry. To do this, thankfully they mentioned how to do this, press INC. Uh, I don't even know what it's doing over there. I think it means like this. 25,500, that line. I don't even know why we have to do this, but uh, okay. Um, I hope I did that right. Set entry EMS uh, 0.05G switch up to arm. To arm the EMS. I would like an explanation for what that actually does. But, okay. Set the EMS mode to entry. And keep it on standby. Okay, uh, entry is like that. And standby mode is right there. The initial program to prepare for entry is P61, the entry preparation program. On the CMC, run for 37, enter 60, 60, one, enter. Okay. First input will be the predicted latitude and longitude of the splashdown location. And the last is if the initial entry will be heads up or heads down. This controls the lift vector, so we're heads down now. The capsule has been designed to have an aerodynamic lift vector and is opposite of the direction of the heads. So if the heads are pointing down, the vector points up. This vector is used to maneuver the capsule during entry, just like an airplane. Well, okay. Uh, press proceed to accept the default values. Alright, I guess that's the right location. Next, noun 60 shows the prediction for entry, like the predicted g-force, 9, uh, velocity at entry interface, and flight path angle between inertial velocity and local horizontal at entry interface. So flight path angle is 2.1 degrees. We're going to hit the atmosphere at 25,639 feet per second. That's what it's saying. Okay, and it's entry interfaces, and when I say hit the atmosphere, it means 400,000 feet. First, proceed to accept the values. It's sure puffing a lot, isn't it? Well, hopefully it knows what it's doing. Next screen shows more predictions, so proceed. Like the range to go from 0.05 Gs. Uh, the predicted velocity at 0.05g and the time until 0.05g. So when we get 0.05g's of deceleration really, we'll still be going pretty fast. Okay, proceed. Okay, well it stopped puffing when I press proceed. P61 now automatically moves to P62. So uh, we see program 62 up there. The CSM-SM separation pre-entry pre -entry maneuver. Program 62 displays verb 50 noun 25 with 41 in registry 1. Uh, this means please perform checklist item 41, which is the CSM SM LSCM SM separation. So that's transmission and docking. That's not the right thing. Where are you? I mean, I guess it's still under SPS the orbit and entry here. So we've done all that, and then we got we are at item thirty here. Request CMSM set. Okay. Check the well. Okay, they, they told me to go to uh, on, on the very next thing. They told me exactly which section to go to. All right. Set the CM RCS propellant. The arm, then pressurize the CM RCS, so the command module RCS as opposed to the service module RCS. Okay, this requires that the pyros are armed, the switch is momentar momentary and will return back to its down position. Okay, so that goes to 
SCS. Then we will need to change our power source. So far in this mission, the fuel cells have been the primary source of power. Since these are located in the service module, we will lose them when we separate. Not lose, lose. The entry and post landing batteries will take over as the primary power source. These are located in the command module. To tie them to the main bus, set the main bus tie to AC switch up. And that one too. The battery should now be powering the command module. Yeah, really we have a lot of other stuff to switch. <laughs> but uh, I think they're making it simple on us. We will now perform the SM separation. Yeah, there was a lot more in the checklist, so... Alright. Set that one to up. There we go. So both switches have to be flicked to separate. Okay, the service module is now separated from us and drifting away from the command module. And there we see it in the external view. Okay, so that goes to CMC again. And press Pro on the computer. So we've done 41. This activates the entry DAP and once again displays the predicted landing point and gives you an opportunity to select the initial lift vector. Use the view selector to move to the commander's window. Stand window. Set the controls to manual and correct the attitude so you are facing head down and the FDAI is showing the target ping's attitude. I can't see a darn thing out of here. <laughs> so uh we'll, we'll, we'll wait till it finish maneuvering finishes maneuvering i don't know with all it's doing why it wouldn't be able to orient to heads down though it's literally being heads up well i think i need to get these on okay 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 stop okay now can i do yes oh okay oh Okay, well, I'm rolling to heads down. The line crossing the entire window is at 31.7 degrees. That's that line there. In the case, the relative angle between the horizon and the x-axis of the spacecraft. The horizon should be within 5 degrees of this line. But then it tells me that the CM will now move to entry attitude, so it's going to do it automatically. So I don't understand this, but... Okay, moving to the window. I sort of see the horizon. What does that give us? Well, it's within 5 degrees anyway. Alright, let's see. Proceed. So that's program 63 as it says. Okay, let me go back down. Hopefully... I mean, should I turn it back from... Should I go back to CMC mode auto then? Well, it's tilted up a little bit more, but that's probably okay. As long as it's heads down, it's fine. Okay, back to the disc key. Okay, so this mode... Uh, well, this noun 64 is showing the current drag acceleration, velocity, and range to splash. Key verb 16e to monitor this. So, okay, verb 16... Okay, now it's ticking down stuff. Okay, range to splash, so that's when we're gonna splash down. So it is actually ticking down. And it's showing our current velocity, okay. Mainly keep me updated with the drag acceleration will automatically move to P64 at 0.05G. The DAP will maintain a stable attitude. Okay, so why couldn't it get to this attitude in the first place? Anyway, um, all right. Using oral view, focus on the CM and use time scale until the CM passes the entry interface mark. Okay, we're there. We already passed the entry interface mark. <laughs> uh, well, it hasn't 
Well, it's waiting until 0.05 G's is detected before we get to program 64. Sometimes I know what the EMS actually does. Other times I don't. This is one of the cases where I actually don't. It can monitor the Delta V, but then it seems like the this key is perfectly capable of monitoring the Delta V too. So... Okay, we've got some drag now. Okay, well, 05. Okay, there we go. Let's switch to program 64 now. I like the numbers that they had before, but alright. Now it's got the speed in the center one and then the drag in the bottom one EMS to normal and now it's getting I guess the Delta V so how much we've slowed down also recommend you to try to set the controls to manual Control roll as the other axes are controlled by the aerodynamic forces, right? Well, okay. Um, P64 will decide the next step, so I guess I'll set to 3. Right? That's what I wanted, right? BMC mode to 3, yeah. So, well, we are in Earth Entry, it moves to program 67. Roll is used to guide the capsule's lift vector and towards the splashdown point. This is when high g-forces take place. EMS will draw a line showing, oh, so that's what we want. Uh, draw a line showing the g-force and velocity. Set the SC cont to SCS as soon as the entry guidance is complete. Yes, we are there. Oh, uh, no, we aren't. Okay. Boop. Um, yeah, it needs to show noun 67. Check the landing checklist on the mission pad. Well, things are happening. So, how do I roll it? How do you want me to roll it? It doesn't say Earth landing. Okay. Insert. I guess it's not going through that one here. Insert the fuses for those two. Yeah, we did that one first. Okay, we did that. Arm the ELS logic on main control panel one. Yes. The chutes will now deploy. So we've armed the chutes already. Okay, so the bomb register, I think, is the range to splash down now. And yeah, I don't know how to control our landing location with roll based on the EMS. That's probably a complicated topic. And... Yeah, we're in the middle of things. Where's my altimeter, anyway? Oh, there we go. I'm gonna prepare to run all that. So, in theory, right now I could roll the spacecraft. But I don't know which way to roll it. I assume the EMS would help me out, or something would help me out to decide that, but. If I had the latitude and longitude for splashdown, maybe I could figure it out, but it's not actually displaying that right now. Maybe that little needle shows me something. I'm not sure. So we've got three G's of acceleration right now. Oh, the control system is really flicking the pitch up and down dramatically. But uh, our acceleration is going down, so I guess we've slowed down a lot. I, I don't know what that number corresponds to then. And we are going down. Okay, we are going down. Okay, so where is that release valve there? I can't seem to click it. Ah. Okay, wait for 30 kilometers. Uh, not 30,000 feet. Yeah, we're there. 
wait for 24,000 feet. I guess it already did half the things. Okay, that's 24,000 feet. Okay, command on. Oh, uh, command off. There we go. Uh, apex cover jettison push. So that's the arrow cap. Wait for drogue deploy auto. Drogue shoot is deployed, they say. Okay, uh, well. Wait for 10,000 feet. All right, let's go into the window. There's our drogue. Okay, we have main shoots deploying. So, back. Oh. Uh, come on, cover. All right, then we go to the right hand seat and we need that simplex. And then back to the left hand seat, reach back over here and close the release valve. That's that. Which way is it? There we go. All right. And then. Oh, that's there. CM propellant dump. And purge. And dump. And. That's over there. So. Battery C. Yeah. Oh, I'm clicking everything wrong. I've clicked a whole bunch of wrong things, but it's probably okay. Wait for 3,000 feet altitude. Okay, there was a lot in this les lesson, but we skipped quite a lot. Like, I still don't understand what the EMS is, but... <laughs> um, or what it does in this phase. And it's going back down. It's now counting down again. I don't know what it's trying to do. Um, but it's, yeah, please know we skipped many important steps in setup. The next lesson will be the exam. You didn't even teach me properly. Anyway, uh, it will be similar to this. Uh, and the next step isn't the exam because next thing we have is transposition and docking. But maybe we should do the exam first and then transposition and docking because the exam doesn't cover the transposition and docking. Yeah, it will be similar to this, but you will follow the mission pad che checklists. Okay, so, well, I guess we should watch the splashdown. And... You know, we should actually finish the rest of the stuff on here, so let's see. Let's make it official. Do we get the time warper on here? No. Okay, we are below that. Okay, panel two. Off, off. Uh, that is over there. Cabin release valve dump. Okay, wait for 800. We can see the water though. Okay, uh. How, how, how can I see the water so clearly when we're so high up? Okay, well, let's just know where that is. And then that goes to close. We have a lot to do with that little cabin pressure release, release thing, Majiggy. External view. It's like this. I swear out the window it looks like it's all very close and the carrier is always there. That is no indication of how well you did re-entry. Okay, that looks like 800 to me. Come on. Alright. Alright, we finished the checklist. And splash down. Okay, so there we have it. It has splashed down, and I'll wrap it up here. And I think next time I'll do the test, and then we'll do transposition and docking. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.